hello world. So today is the day I am going to be taking the DEXA scan in a couple of hours. It is 6 a.m. around right now and the scan is at 8 a.m. So I'm going to weigh in right now and then I'm going to do a little bit of physique update for my last weigh in. Um, and then we'll be headed to the DEXA scan. So we'll see what happens. Ultimately, it's just a number to benchmark against. So I'm ready for whatever happens. Um, in my opinion, I think I'm somewhere between 12 or 13%. So we'll see. All right, week six physique update, the last one. Let's step on the scale. All right, weighing in finally at 149.2 pounds. All right, looking good. Hey. Compared to week one, there's a pretty big difference. A lot more definition. For sure, you can see it from all, all sides, all angles. More definition. Back is the same as always. It's good to begin with, so. And you can see it from this side as well. A lot more definition. There we go. There we have it. All right, now for the DEXA scan. So we're here at DEXAFIT, a provider of the DEXA scan in San Francisco, California. So DEXA stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry. So traditionally, this was used to measure bone density, but it's also been applied to measure body composition. So that's what we're here for, measuring body fat percentage and lean muscle mass. So usually DEXA is within one to two percent error, so it's one of the better methods of measuring body fat. And it takes about six minutes. All right, so the moment we've all been waiting for. So the results. So whenever you finish your DEXA scan, you get this printout of all the results and analysis. It has all sorts of stuff like your bone density, but I, the most important things for me on there are uh, body fat percentage and lean muscle mass, right? So how much body fat am I carrying? How much muscle am I, do I have? Um, so let's have a drum roll before we go over the results. So I am at 12.7% body fat today. So yeah, it's what I expected, right? I guess that I'm between 12 and 13%. So I hit the 12% threshold, I could have been a little lower, but I mean, I'm pretty satisfied with the results. So if we look at the comparison from the last couple of tests I took, um, so I took a test, a DEXA scan test, um, a month ago around, so maybe a couple weeks before I started these videos, and I was at 16.7% body fat, and um, I weighed in at 159.4 pounds, while today I weighed in at 151.1. So one thing the DEXA scan does, it weighs you like when you're lying vertically, so that's why it's different than um, the horizontal measurement that you saw in the morning. So from that 8.3 pounds that I lost, I lost 0.8 pounds of muscle, and the rest of the pounds I lost were fat. So yeah, when you're trying to uh, cut down your body fat, you want to retain as much muscle as possible. So the fact that I only lost 0.8 pounds of muscle through this, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, so overall, I'm pretty happy. Um, I could have been a little bit lower, but that was just a matter of time. So probably if I were to continue with this for another one or two weeks, I would be at uh, closer to 12% uh, exactly and you might see here that I actually was pretty close to 12% in February I was 12.2% body fat in February 
where from December of last year till February of this year, I went on another 12% um, body fat goal and I basically achieved that. But I kind of lost it after and I went into some bad habits. Um, so yeah, so after I achieved 12% then I wanted to like gain more muscle and I kind of went overboard with my diet. I didn't have any control. Um, so, and also like Corona started then too and the whole gym environment setup was like totally different, right? There was no more gym, so I had to figure out how it was gonna work out. Um, and so I gained 25 pounds actually after that. So I was almost 175 pounds at my peak in the middle of quarantine and coronavirus. Um, so yeah, I obviously took it way too overboard. So I definitely had to get back on track. So I started to diet again and I learned how to exercise effectively at home. So those were the two things that allowed me to get even down to the 16.7% body fat. And then finally today getting to 12.7. So yeah, so it's definitely been a journey over these last six months or so. Um, a lot of ups and downs, but I mean, that's part of the process and what to expect. Let's dig deeper into some of these DEXA scan results. So here's a breakdown of where I'm storing my fat. As you can see here, I'm storing the majority of my fat in my legs and I'm storing the least amount of fat in the Android area. So the Android area is the abdominal area, basically your abs. I'm only storing 7.4% there while storing 16.4% in the legs. So when I originally took my DEXA scans, this was something that was surprising to me because growing up as a kid, uh, I was like borderline overweight. So I always had like a stomach. So for me, it seemed like that's where I carried the fat. But yeah, the DEXA scan made me realize that that's actually not the case. So it's definitely useful information. So again, my arms are at only 10.3%. Um, so, so the trunk, which is the, basically your torso, including your chest and everything, mine's at 9.7. And the gynoid is basically 14.8, and that's basically waist and below. Um, so yeah, so these are the breakdown of my distribution. Everyone will be different based on genetics. Some people store most of their fat in their arms maybe, or their legs or their abdominal, it just depends. Some people are pretty evenly distributed. All that is genetic, so this is something you can't really control. So what's next for me, right? So what are my next fitness goals? So immediately I am going to try to just maintain what I have for the next two weeks. Have a little bit of food that I've been miss missing out on for sure. Um, like, you know, Snickers bar right here. So definitely gonna um, eat a little bad food for the next couple of days. And after that, just maintain for the next two weeks my calorie intake. So be at a maintenance level, maintenance level. So eat as much calories as I burn. Um, moving forward though, I want to gain more muscle mass. So I'm gonna do a lean bulk this time and not a dirty bulk like before. Definitely learned from my mistakes, so not gonna do that. I'm gonna be in a 200 to 300 calorie surplus every day, so just eat that amount more than my maintenance level a day. And I'm gonna see how that is and see how much muscle I gain and if I'm satisfied with that. I'm gonna to try to maintain my body fat under 16% so I don't get too big, too fat, too quickly. So I will keep track of that and try to not go overboard again. So that is the next steps. Again, it's been a journey these last six weeks. So I hope you guys enjoyed following me on that journey. I hope it got you some insight into what it takes for me to achieve those results. And I guess one thing that you can take away from that is these goals, they're achievable and I think anyone with the discipline and work ethic can achieve them. I am not a bodybuilder. I don't have supreme genetics. I have a regular job that I focus on majority of the time. So I'm able to do this by 
having discipline in my diet and consistency in my workouts. So if you can, if you guys can do that, you can achieve those results as well. So now lead me to the Snickers bar. Sadly, you're not going to be able to see me eat this because it might be rated R. I'm out.